welcome, welcome, welcome to Time in the Word telecast. I'm just so glad you tuned in tonight, this holiday season, and you took the time out to watch us. We got a phenomenal uh, word for you tonight from our founder, Apostle Roosevelt Burns. But before we go into that, I have a few announcements, and let me say a little short prayer. Father, thank you for this opportunity, and I lose blessings on those that are watching me through the internet, on uh, CO, at COD Word, Deliverance TV, Roku, uh, Apple TV, wherever they're watching me, I loose the blessings of God upon them. For the blessings of God maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. Amen in Jesus' name. One well, of the way of announcement, our prayer lines are open. Dial uh, 302-803-9093 and there's someone there to pray with you. That prayer line is open just for you. If you need prayer, call. Don't, don't not call. Please call. If you're depressed, if you feel down, and you feel like you're alone, feel like you need help, call that number, 302-803-9093, and someone will be there to pray with you. Prayer is always happening at the Church of Deliverance every Monday through Friday with the prayer warriors. And that's at 6 a.m. in the morning. And Tuesday the night with Pastor McGuire at 6.30. Amen. Also, you can join us for one of our services in Downingtown, Pennsylvania at 9 a.m. We're located at 199 Bradford Avenue in Downingtown, Pennsylvania. And in Vineland, New Jersey at 11.15, we're worshiping at the Wingate Hotel in Vineland, New Jersey. The address is 2196 West Landis Avenue, Vineland, New Jersey. But I want you to watch our New Year's Eve service will take place at on Thursday, December the 31st at 630 and we'll have a communion service. So come and commune with us. Well, I believe that's all the announcements. Let's get into our offering. Acts 20 35. I'll be reading that from the King James Version. I have showed you all things, how that so laboring you ought to support the weak, and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he says, it is more blessed to give than to receive. The Passion Translation says, in the latter part of it it says, giving brings a far greater blessing than receiving. I'm going to say that again. Giving brings a far greater blessing than receiving. Paul is saying the ministry, the true ministry means giving and not getting. Because when you came to Christ, you received everything that you would ever need. So the true ministry means to give, means to follow the example of Christ. How he said it's more blessed to give than to receive. Giving and blessings are gifts that come from God. God is a giver. He, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And we give. We are like God. We have been blessed to serve, to give, and receive the same as Jesus did. He served. He gave his life and on our behalf. And so we give. And we receive. When he gave his life, look at all the children the, that he received from giving. When we give, we are planting seeds into the kingdom of God. And as we place our seeds into the ground, we are opening the doors for more blessings to manifest in our lives through the spiritual principles of sowing and reaping. When we give, we become one with God and giving and receiving his plan and his will for our lives. I'm going to say that again. When we give, we become one with God and giving and receiving his plan and his will for our lives. When we give, it means that we know and realize we have already been blessed. We realize we have already been blessed. When we give, we give out of the blessing. Blessings come from having an open and a giving heart towards God. It says it's more blessed to give than to receive. 
So as we give in the kingdom of God, we become kingdom receivers. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your steadfast love and mercy upon us. Father, as we give tonight, we believe we receive a hundredfold return on our giving. So we give out our offering gladly, and we receive from the kingdom of God gladly. As you said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And I loose the blessings of God upon everyone tonight as they give in Jesus' name. So you can give by texting CODMG to 54244 or go to COD Word under a deliverance and go to COD Word under online giving and hit the donate button and follow the directions there. Or you can give by going to paypal.me slash church of deliverance and give. If you have an offering envelope, you can just fill it out and turn it in on Sunday morning to those that would like to give, participate in giving. You just take an envelope and send it, mail it in. Praise God. Hallelujah. This, this year is a year of increase. You want to tap into increase. Increasing in every area of our lives. Well, let's do the offering blessing. I am redeemed. For Christ hath redeemed me from the curse of the law. For poverty has given me wealth. For sickness he has given me health. And for death he has given me eternal life. I'm blessed with those spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I am blessed, for have been appointed and empowered to be blessed. I am blessed. The Lord is my shepherd. He feeds me. He guides me. He shields me. Therefore, I do not lack, and I do not want for anything. But this is my year of manifestation. Yeah, this year is a year of increase for us church we're going to increase in every area of our lives so tap into that we live by faith we do not fear we walk in love and God provides all our needs we are blessed we are blessed amen we are blessed well we're getting ready to get into the message and I want you to listen to this timeless message from the founder of the church of deliverance apostle Roosevelt Burns if you'd like to uh, know a little bit more about my father, Apostle Roosevelt Burns, he, he ministered to thousands of people all up and down the East Coast, pioneering churches and writing many books. And if you would like to know, uh, 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 receive a list of the books that he has written, write me today at Post Office Box 905, Bear, Delaware. And I'll get some information out to you right away. Well, at this time, let's get right into the message tonight by Apostle Roosevelt Burns. Turn your Bible with me to the book of Hebrews, chapter 6. We're going into a new lesson. New lesson. The doctrine of laying on hands. The doctrine of laying on of hands. So, it's a ministry. The disciples were taught this by Jesus when he was here on planet Earth. He taught them about the doctrine of laying on of hands. Then he sent them out to, to get experience in standing on hands. Mm -hmm. They went from place to place. He sent out two by two, and he sent out uh, three, he sent out four. Sending out two to support each other. It is very important to understand the necessity 
of laying on of hands, but the person whose faith is not up where it should be. Okay. Praise God. Laying on of hands is to implement this life of um, exercising faith as it were. Some uh, ministers say they ain't on the hands, it's for babies. But we got a whole lot of baby Christians all over the world. If that be the case. <clears throat> so then uh, we're going to look at this as a doctrine. And a doctrine is taught to the church, not to babies. So because somebody's hand is laid on them, another Christian can heal them. Don't mean that they're baby. That means that they are a channel for the Holy Spirit to function and operate through. Because whenever the anointing is released from one's hand, it travels from their spirit to their hand. And this, that's, this is why I emphasize so much the importance of renewing your mind. See, the Holy Spirit doesn't have any direct contact with your mentality, your mind. He has his contact with your spirit. And he can't do, tell your spirit anything to help your mind until you get it renewed. So actually what, what is happening, we are actually limiting the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit to our own knowledge. Because we're not getting into our renewed mind what we need. When the word of God is ministered, and when it is received, that's an opportunity to receive it. Into your mentality. Because it's going to change that part of you. Remember that I read, I think it was on last week, I had you read that, the uh, no, week before last. I think with the uh, fifth chapter of of uh, fifth chapter of, fifth chapter of Ephesians in the eighth verse. You remember? Huh? Yeah. Whatsoever, whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you remember that. <laughs> but, uh, you see, it's good to um to to um read this over and over. And over. Mm -hmm. You remember I told you about the if you want the, the Holy Spirit to to hurry up and come aboard in direction, just say over and over, the word of the Lord is pure, and the word of the Lord is true. Word of the Lord is pure, word of the Lord is true. Word of the Lord is pure, word of the Lord is pure. Oh my 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 my. You get a connection from what we call the glory world. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> so what we're, we're trying to, to bring um, to the forefront of your mentality, since the Holy Ghost can't get there, I can take what he put in the book and I can place it in there if you receive it in there. Once it get in there, then the Holy Spirit can deal with that up there through your human spirit because he still doesn't deal directly with your renewed mind. He deals with your human spirit that your human spirit will transfer to your mind. 
See what I'm saying? But if the Holy Spirit give your spirit information, your spirit can't give it to your mind until it's renewed. And the importance of that is, the importance of that is, you don't get nothing if you don't receive nothing. Hallelujah. Hmm? Amen. You know what I'm saying? Amen. That's what the Bible tells you. Receive and meet me. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Yeah. You didn't grab your word. Yes. It's able to save your soul or renew your mind or, imp or implant the word in there. Yeah. That's actually what he's doing. Yeah. When I minister to you, I am sowing the word of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. And when you receive it, mm -hmm. it's being planted. Right. Now, if I mm -hmm. sow the word mm -hmm. and you don't receive it, it won't be planted. Mm -hmm. Huh? Do yeah. you see where I'm coming from? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how important it is. You can't receive the word and be your own boss all at the same time. It won't work. You can't receive the word and have your own way about things. It just won't work. Now, 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 let me say it like this. When we came to Christ, at that point in time, we were supposed to have died. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. Now you know what I'm talking about with great like that. Yeah. I'm talking about the carnality. Mm -hmm. A Christian cannot be spiritual and carnal at the same time. Amen. Either you are carnal or you are spiritual. So then, here's what I'm telling you. So the carnal mind cannot receive, a Paul saying this, the things of the Spirit of God. Because they are foolishness sometimes. Yes. I'm talking like somebody has not to that mind that's gone. But the spiritual mind receives, implants, and it grows. Now the Holy Spirit can deal with your human spirit and your human spirit can keep feeding what he's getting from the Holy Spirit into your renewed mind. Yes, yes. It's important to walk in the spirit. But if you don't have nothing in your renewed mind, and if your new mind hasn't been renewed properly, and received from it to see and wrap the word, it's very difficult for you to walk in the spirit. Hello. Amen. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Amen. It's true. And that's the way Paul put it. That's the way I understand what Paul said. And that's what I do. Amen. I do what Paul said do. I know that's right. Glory to God. Yes. I didn't have to live on the problem with some people. I just do what the word says do. Amen. Only the word. Only the Bible. Yeah. Only this. Only this word. Hallelujah, boy. All I do, no other word, yes. Yes. no other head, yes. no other mind, but the mind of Christ. Yes. That's all I do. Yes. Mm. That's why I am trying to plow, plow deep. Yes. Once you receive what I'm saying, 
The chicken are knowing. The cat are knowing. The dog are knowing. Have you got it? <laughs> But it's a fact. This is where we begin. I've just written another book. Praise God. And I pointed out there is nothing in this universe, nothing, no organization. No other church besides the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. I know that's right. Is going to declare war on the devil. No other. And you will not be able to succeed without being a well dress Christian. You got to be well dressed. You want to know how to dress as a Christian? Go into no, no, just drop me Christian. Go into the sixth chapter. Young Mary read this morning. Sixth chapter of Ephesians. Read the sixth chapter of Ephesians. Yes. You'll learn how to dress as a Christian. Yes. yes. And when you put those clothes on. Oh, glory, the full armor. Oh, baby, God. <laughs> huh? You will be hard to deal with. Because people will see this operation and this function in your life. You'll see it. you see how it moves, how it operates, how it works. I love it. That's why I tell you the truth. I would take you here if I didn't love it. Are you listening to me? Amen. I'd take you here. You go at home. Praise God. Don't think about it no more until next Sunday. Back here, take a living in. That's not so. That's not so. That's not me. Excuse me, Pastor. Billy, move your mic a little bit against it from the table a little bit. It keeps making a sound. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it's going to be on the tape. You know, oh, okay. It won't bang it up against it. I'm glad you told me that. And mess up the tape. Okay. Don't I try to get Billy's attention and move it a little bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. We're done with it. It's important I'm not going to open something now. <laughs> All right, let's go to uh, y'all got any business? Uh, Hebrews 6 and verse uh, 2. Are you there? Uh-huh. Yeah. Of the doctrine of baptism. Mm-hmm. And of laying on hand, mm-hmm. and the resurrection of the dead, mm-hmm. and of the eternal judgment. These are various doctrines from the first verse on down to the second verse, but I just, my primary interest is of the laying on of hand. The laying on of hand. You remember this was done in the Levitical uh, precept. How did they would lay the hands on the goat? The high priest, the priest yeah. one, brother. Those priests that worked outside of the uh, the uh, tabernacle would pray, make this prayer. But the high priest, he made his on the inside of the tabernacle. But what they would do is, is um, after they kill one of them, and then they would sprinkle that animal. Then they would put their head, hands on this animal and pray. Then they would release him into the wilderness. And when he go out into the wilderness, 
<coughs> ferocious beasts out there with catching and killing. That means their sense are gone for another year. Well then, you got to go back there and do that thing and go all over again next year. Amen. So the Lord made it a little bit more less complicated. <laughs> this is not complicated. We became we became what Jesus is. Huh? Amen. The Bible says that Jesus became that lamb. And the scripture put in this word, he said he was slain from the foundation of the world. All those lambs that were slain down for 4,000 years were in reference to the coming Messiah. The last <coughs> mentioning that we have of that, which is a typical of Jesus Christ, was Abraham's son, Isaac. When he took him to the mountain, the Lord told him to take him up there and offer him up <coughs> sacrifice. That was pointing directly towards Christ, his coming. Because he was going to be the Lamb slain. As a matter of fact, God, God put it in Revelation that he's the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. But God saw <coughs> Abraham was going to say his son. He was going to kill him. He was going to kill him. Well, God told him. You see what I'm saying? He actually was going to kill him. He wasn't going to do that King Saul. Save the best and get a sick one and kill him. No. He got trouble with God when he did that. But he was going to kill his son, he grew back. When he raised the night, to kill his son, God spoke out of hell. Mm -mm. I know you trust me. I know you believe me, man. You think you can't get that ram and all him up. But I know you trust me. I know you would do it. And I know you know yeah. that if, I, if you did it, then I would raise him from the dead. Praise I God. Know you know it. Thank you. So you're my faithful one. Yeah. So really. You're my faithful one. So then, the laying on of hands becomes a doctrine. A doctrine is what holds beliefs together. You follow your doctrine. But when your doctrine um, conflicts with truth, you drop your doctrine. Because truth cannot be blocked by doctrine. Whatever doctrine it is, as Paul said, the doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ. It has to be his doctrine. We have to talk about what he is doing and what he has already done. Come to God. And this is supernatural. Mm -hmm. We aren't, we aren't, we aren't supernatural. We are spiritual. Mm -hmm. But being spiritual, we can be used and function in the supernatural. Yes. Yes. So when you lay your hands on somebody who's sick, and they Get well, uh, get healed. That's a supernatural operation. God uses you in the supernatural, though you are spiritual. He uses you in the supernatural. He don't use natural in spiritual, mm -hmm. and he doesn't use supernatural in natural. But he does use spiritual 
in supernatural. So then, am I getting through? Yes. Yeah. So then, um, what is he saying? The laying on of hands. When the individual who is authorized by God, and you know anybody can't lay their hands on somebody. You know that. I mean, they can do it, but it doesn't mean they just a form of allergies. Because you got all kind of churches out there. <coughs> Don't you believe in the Lord Jesus? Well, they say they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, but they won't follow me, baptism in the Holy Spirit. Huh? They won't bother them. So they won't, um, they don't believe it. So how are you going to transfer something from yourself to somebody else? Whatever that is that God, I sure would want to transfer it to me. And I'm sure you would need one. We can only transfer what's on the inside of my spirit. What's in your spirit can be transferred by the unction of the Holy Spirit. This is a Holy Spirit operation, a Holy Spirit function. The Holy Spirit <coughs> releases what is known as an anointing. Yeah. That anointing <coughs> comes from your spirit. And whatever you got on, when that anointing come upon you, that anointing, anointing goes into whatever your clothes you got on. And that's why Paul gathered up apron and handkerchief and prayed over. He released the anointing in that kerchief. He'll release the anointing in that apron. And then they would take that apron and send it to somebody who was sick. They would lay that apron on the person in the name of Jesus. And the people would be healed and delivered because of the transference of the anointing of the Holy Ghost feel the possible. Yeah. There was release into what he had into the apron, and it was in turn laid upon some sick body. Yes. Can you see that? Yes. See how this this is manifested. This is the way it's manifested. This is the way it operates. And it can be done by the smallest Christian is not to be used such a term, no, it's not proper, but the one who is not functionable in the word of God. A baby Christian can lay hands on the sick until they find out differently. And this is it. This, this is the point. The same thing works with the baby Christian. A baby Christian can receive healing until they find out differently. Whenever they find out that God's best for them is to operate in faith and not in laying on of hands, then they will become responsible. They'll become responsible. To exercise faith because laying on of hand is not going to help them much. You see, you become responsible according to what you have received. Are you listening to me? Amen. That's when you become responsible. So then he is talking about laying on of hands. Paul did lay his hands on the person. But he laid them on the apron, the treasures, and then he sent them out. Oh, 
I don't know how many times I've done that during my early years of radio ministry. I remember sending out specifically, I remember that. We would cut these things up into square pieces, <coughs> pray over them. And when a person sent for one, we would send it to him. I specifically remember a man in Annapolis, Maryland. Blind man, clothing God. Now, now this, this is really something. What God did, not what I did, what God did. I was on the instrument for the anointing to flow through. And what happened was, I got a letter from him, I guess maybe about, I guess maybe two or three, two or three weeks later, that how he is now going out seeing. He can go out of his house and walk around and he can see. He's beginning to see. And he was grateful for it. Who wouldn't be? Who wouldn't be? That's just a typical, typical incident. Many, many of these we sit out. And beautiful testimonies. Sometimes I read them over the radio and sometimes I would not. But this is an illustration of how God can operate through his vessel. Because that's all we are. Who are you? Oh, I'm just a vessel. That's all I am. What did Paul say? It's no more I. You know what he said? Yes. You know what Paul said? Yes. It's no more I. Well, who, who did he say it was? Christ. <laughs> I hear that. I hear that. That's who it is. It's Christ. See, he has different channels and different means of getting to people. And he don't want nobody taking his glory. We stay with the word. Amen. Glory to God. We stay with the word. Now then, we're talking about this supernatural transference through the land on the path. First of all, before persons lay their hands on people, they need to give time to God. You need to get along with God. Pray. Get along with Him. Spend time. Spend time with God. Spend time with Him. Get hungry for Him. Not even get hungry for something you need. Get hungry for God in the same manner. Pray. Read your word. Read the word. You don't pray for God. To do this, you pray for God to use you. Praise God. Huh? Amen. Don't no pray for God. God did into my hand. God set my hand on my back. God anoint my No, you don't pray for God. That's not the prayer. The prayer is that you get closer. The, the Bible says, draw not to God, and he'll draw not to you. So you know things gonna happen. When the Almighty gets close to you, uh, there's going to be some setting on fire around there. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you don't have to tell them to do it to your hand. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it to my body. Do it, Lord. Uh-uh. It's a waste of time. Uh-uh. Waste of time. Just get close to God. Draw out to God, you are drawing out to you. Now then, Go another further. You see, this supernatural transference has to come from God. And how is it transferred? Through your hand. Your hands can be anointed. 
This is what I've experienced. I'm talking about what the word says, some of the things I experienced. Your hands become anointed. Sometimes you can feel, seem like tingling in your hand when your hand becomes anointed. You can feel, sense this tingling in your hand because that is the time for hands to be laid on people. I remember the time when we used to pull our services and we, sometimes the Holy Spirit would be moving in the service and sometimes all of a sudden, it's right in the middle of the service, I jump up. I say, I want to pray for you now. I want to pray for you right now, right now. I stop everything. I want to pray for you now. I know it didn't look right. The train eyes. Mm -hmm. What are you doing when you haven't finished this part of the sermon? Following God, that's all we're doing. Amen. You see, you're following God. And that's what happens sometimes. You don't do it when you want it, you do it when He wants you to do it. Amen. Glory to God. Because he's the one doing it. Yes. That's what we have to also remember. Mm -hmm. And then on hands. Supernatural. Mm -hmm. Jesus practiced the laying on of hands. It's the ministry. He had, it's ministry. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost who went about doing good and healing all the old of the devil of God was with him. God was with him. God's with us. Amen. Just like he was with Jesus. Yes. <laughs> Glory. It's no different. Just like God was with Jesus. God is with us. Yes. Now that's the value with God. And when you walk with God, you can talk like this. But don't talk like this and not walking with God. It won't work. But it works when you're walking with God. Somebody get me Mark 5, 30, 23, and also Mark 6 and 5. Also Mark 8, 22. <clears throat> Mark 5.23, Mark 6.5, Mark 8.22 through 25. All right, Mark 5.23. And besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her that she may be healed, and she shall live. See, Jesus' ministry was laying on her hands. And this, I think this was Jared, wasn't it? Yeah. Wasn't this Jared? Yeah. So uh, he was a rich young ruler. But he heard about Jesus, he knew that Jesus was laying hands on people, and they were being delivered, and they were being set free. So he approached Jesus and placed God on her. She'll be made whole. She'll be set free. All you got to do is lay your hands on them. And God's going to do the rest because God was with him. Jesus went about doing good, healed all the rest of them because God was with Jesus. You do what you do because God is with you. Glory to God. Just as simple as that. Nothing special. It's a regular thing with God. Our special thing is get with him. Spending time with him. Getting lost into him. His thing. Yeah. Be concerned about his thing. Yeah. Okay. Look at Mark 6, 5. <coughs> and he could bear you no know mighty work, save that he laid his hand, laid his hand upon a few sick folk. Now you see what happened there? Let me show you what happened there. He went to this place to minister. It was so much unbelief in him. 
There was so much doubt in the place that the Son of God couldn't heal nobody. Why? Because of doubt, unbelief. Unbelief. It be here to hear what you say you got us. But then he even hung a head around. Say he laid his hands upon a few. Yeah. Notice. He only laid his hands upon a few sick folks. But he went to the next town, and the next town, and he began to preach faith yeah. into those other towns where he would be coming and the disciples would be coming to Memphis. Yeah. So he preached faith to build the people's faith up. So it will be elevated enough to receive him when he comes. Amen. Can you see that? Amen. So where doubt and unbelief is, the word of God erases that when it's received. It has to be received. It has to be received with meekness. With meekness. Receive the word with meekness. So faith can come. And if faith comes, you are a fit candidate to receive healing and deliverance. Are you listening to me? Amen. So this is what happened. Jesus could, you can, I can, nobody can. But you're a baby. Right. Unless now, there's an exception to this rule. It would have to be a manifestation, which is known as a spiritual manifestation, without your faith, without my faith, without anybody's faith, the Holy Spirit does it on his own. He just go ahead and heal you because he's the Holy Spirit. Yes. And he has that gift and he operates in that gift. Amen. And he can allow you to operate in that gift as he will, not as I will, not as you will, yes. but as he will. Yes. Can you see that? Yes. Glory to God. Mm. I'm like the little boy, it's getting good and good, young. <laughs> <laughs> So then, let someone got Mark 6, 5. You read that? Did you read uh, Mark 8? No. Can you see how I get excited? <laughs> Mark 8, 22 through 25. And he cometh to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man unto him. Mm -hmm. And he saw him to touch him. Mm -hmm. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out, out of the town. Can you see that? And he wouldn't even pull it on. Excuse me, please. Hold it right there. Hold it just right there. Why wouldn't he pray for the man in the city? <laughs> Why wouldn't he pray for the man in the city? Why wouldn't he pray And there's something else to us. I don't want you to miss this. Mm -hmm. That was in Corazza. Jesus pronounced a curse on the city of Corazza because of their unbelief. Hmm? Now he did that. Believe is right, you're right. But he wouldn't heal him there because he had put a curse on the city. He cursed the city. Hmm? He brought a charge against the city. And that he, he wouldn't do he wouldn't even do any work there. Mm -hmm. There was so crazy mind in that he wouldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. So what he did was when a man wanted to be healed of violence, he took him by his hand. Mm -hmm. Come on, follow me. Let's get out of this place. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take you out here, and you'll be able to see. So we know, daughter. And when he had fixed on his eyes, uh huh, and put his hands upon him. Now listen to me. Listen to me. Some people say, ooh, my, that's on Saturday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm blind, he can spit mine any day. <laughs> any day, any time. <laughs> you know I'm going to see? Yeah. Spit it, brother, spit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> and what else can you do, daughter? Oh. And he put his hand upon him. Uh -huh. He asked him if he saw all. Okay, do you see anything? <laughs> what did he say? And he looked up and said, I see men as trees. I know he did. Oh. After, after that, he put his hand again upon his eyes mm -hmm. and made him look up. <laughs> and he 
and he was restored, and he saw every man healed. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. 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 He, he, he prayed for him twice. Mm -hmm. Didn't he? Yes. He prayed for him twice. Yes. Son of God. Prayed for him twice. Mm -hmm. Here's what I want you to see. Now, I'm not bringing Jesus Christ down here on the level with us. We're not talking this way. But if I should, you got to understand that Jesus had no more to work with than you have to work with. You've got to understand that it's just a simple fact. It's a fact. He was not the Son of God in his ministry. He was the Son of Man in his ministry. He was not preaching as God. He was not functioning as God. He wasn't ministering as God. He was ministering as an anointed prophet. Yeah. You know what he said? How God Anointed. See, he was he was operating under the anointing, not under God. Can you see that? So then, if this is what we don't want to see, so I said, "Well, Jesus did. It. I can do it." Well, you're right. Jesus did. It. You can. Do it. If, if it's something that you are doing, correspond with the word. We can't do no more what the Word said. We have to stay with the Word. As Jesus is, come on. So are we. Come on, say it again. As Jesus is, as Jesus, as Jesus is where are we like Jesus? In this world. What did Jesus do? That's what she read. Mm -hmm. Heal the sick. Yeah. What are you supposed to do? Heal the sick. Why? Because as Jesus is, so are we in this world. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. We are less like Jesus. You gotta start thinking that way now. Don't go around here thinking about. Down don't bother me. I've been down so long. Down don't bother me. You can't be thinking like that. You can't be thinking like that. Oh, if I just would like one of the disciples, or oh, if I would just talk to say, hey, you have a song. Yeah. I, I might not be able to sing like Paul. I might not be able to preach like Peter. I might not be able to do this. But I think they have a love of Jesus. God is a No, it's dumb, man. It's dumb. And Jesus just been his telling us, John writing, said, as he is, so, so is he in this world. Woo. Oh, that's heavy, y'all. Yeah. 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 You don't realize your own potential. Mm -hmm. Say, I've given you power, and I've given you authority yes. over all power of the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise Lord. Jesus said, He that committed sin to the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God would manifest him that he might destroy, might destroy. 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 the works of the devil. All right, now. Jesus. Got the power. We got the power, the authority. You see, authority works through power. Did y'all hear that? Amen. Should I say it again? Authority works through power. Here's another illustration. Policeman out there stopping the traffic. Big truck coming. You stand out in the middle of the room. What that crazy man doing? That big truck is coming. He's got authority. That's what he's got. He don't have power to stop that truck. But his power comes from downtown. <laughs> huh? And he has authority with his badge he got. So respect my authority. Yes. 
And if he don't, you will go down. So Jesus had the power. And we got the authority. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Oh, it's getting quick, y'all. Yeah, yeah. I got a little bit more time. I'm using it all today. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus was ministering in a place, and there come a woman who had a curvature of the spine. We, we often call it the woman that was bent over. Uh, for how many years? 18. 18 years. And Jesus didn't say, come out of the table. No, he didn't say that. He didn't scream at the age. No, he didn't say that. He just laid his anointed hand mm -hmm. on her body, yeah. on her back. <laughs> I just got out of control. <laughs> he just laid his hand on her back. And the Bible said, she straightened right up. They got the fussing at What you doing this on a Sabbath day? You don't supposed to do this. No more of this healing on the Sabbath day. And Jesus said, should not this woman, who being the daughter of Abraham, yes. be loose by her infirmities yes. on the Sabbath day? Yes. He said, you'll go out and get your ass and you'll take it. I know this. You'll get a warning to drink. You will do this one. And this woman is better than that. I know this. Huh? Yes. He is the truth. Mm -hmm. I, should I say jack ass? Glory to God. So Jesus pointed out to this those hypocrites right there why he did what he did. You take those animals and give them water. You mean to tell me this, those animals are better than this woman? That made me think about some people. They take money and send them to take care of a dog, and they want you to take care of babies. They want you to take care of children. Now, how dumb can you be? How mixed up can you be? You see. So then Jesus showed him and them, they and those, where his priorities were. And Abraham, this woman had a right to be healed <laughs> simply because she was the daughter of Abraham. Yeah. Not because I was that I'm operating as a prophet, but because he, she, was the daughter of Abraham. All right. Okay. I got one more script. I think. I... Did you you read that? One more script. Mark. Mark sixteen. Did you read Mark sixteen and eighteen? Yeah. Read that. <laughs> Mark 16 and 18. They shall take up serpents, mm -hmm. and if they drink any deadly thing, mm -hmm. it shall not hurt them. Mm -hmm. They shall lay hands on the sick, mm -hmm. and they shall recover. Yeah. And you see that? Mm -hmm. Now that's a commission. <clears throat> not to the preacher, particularly. But to the body of Christ. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Yeah. what he said. Yeah. Yeah. Go in all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Yeah. 
Nobody learn about Thomas Young to say. Nobody could not. Shall be damned. And these signs shall follow him that for me. This is how I said it to the kid. To a, it's not to the preacher, it's to the laity. Mm -hmm. Or the believer. You know what he said? Yeah. I know what he said at the beginning. That's what we mean. And these signs mm -hmm. that believe. In my name, you yes. shall test that devil. You yes. shall speak to me on that. You shall take up serpent. You can't get any of the thing. You shall not have anything. You shall lay hands on the sick. Yes. And they shall have a cup. Glory to God. Can you see that? Amen. Now he said the believers would be doing this. Yes. Who are the believers? We are. That's right. Any believer. You don't have to be a preacher. Just believe God. Yes. Huh? Just believe God. Yes. Anybody who believes God, Christian in other words, you've been born again. You got the Holy Ghost. Yes. You speak in tongues and the Spirit give out of it. Lay your hands on people. Yes. You got the fire. Yes. You got the fire. The Holy Ghost is the fire. Yes. Huh? The Holy Ghost is the fire. Yes. So it burns out all the drawers. Close with this note. The greatest thing as an individual believer can do is to wrap themselves up in the word of God. Amen. 